some things. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, good morning, and uh, thanks for coming out talking about uh, cybersecurity stuff. Um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, when, I, when I was uh, in high school, uh, a lot of folks were doing sports and things like that, and uh, I was in the basement taking apart, you know, my Teddy Ruxpin and, and trying to, well, not, not in high school, I guess, but uh, uh, <laughs> that, that'd be kind of weird. Uh, but, uh, you know, taking apart things and figuring out how to program, and uh, I uh, ended up joining the military on the, uh, the cyber intelligence side, uh, going in and breaking into computer systems for a living. And so I've uh, got to experience a lot of different things, everything from cyber warfare activities that you see in the news happening today, um, all the way to breaking into some of the most sophisticated security systems. I was actually out, uh, out back earlier talking about how I just got recently arrested. Um, and uh, so I was breaking into a building and I uh, thought we had shut down the, the uh, security system, the silent alarm. And uh, we were breaking in, by the way, uh, they hired us to do this, by the way. So. Um, but uh, you know, we uh, triggered a silent alarm and actually got busted by the police. And so uh, three police uh, cars come up and you, you, know, you don't mess around. You come up with your hands up and uh, you know, they handcuff you, throw you in the back and they validate who you are and then they let you go after that, which is the great part about uh, doing what I do. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's, it's been, a, been an interesting ride and experience. I would have never thought, you know, um, going through these different areas, um, all the different things I'd be able to do. And just a little bit of a, a background on myself. Uh, I, anybody see the TV show uh, Mr. Robot? Yeah, I've done a, lot, a few of the skits on there for them. Uh, and so great, great TV series. It's actually technically accurate, which should probably scare you a little bit uh, as far as uh, what's actually possible out there. Uh, in season one, uh, episode five, uh, Elliot broke into a place called Steel Mountain. Uh, which uh, he was trying to social engineer his way in, and he used my tool to spoof a text message uh, to get in and, and make it look like it was coming from the, the uh, lady's husband. Uh, in season two, episode one, Darlene uh, uh, was hacking into Evil Corp and deployed uh, my tool, which is called the Social Engineer Toolkit, uh, to go and actually uh, attack different systems. So it's, it's been fun working and seeing security kind of go in different locations, but you know, Mr. Robot is a very technically accurate uh, TV show and also uh, totally a, a mind thriller when it comes to what's happening. Uh, but I've got to testify in front of Congress. Uh, I'll actually probably never do that again. That was an interesting experience. Uh, but uh, working with uh, that type of, uh, of interesting things, not, not for me, I guess. Uh, but I'm on the news a lot and all those other things. And I run two companies uh, that are specifically dedicated to protecting organizations. So we have a 24-7 security operations center of hackers looking for hackers and trying to bust uh, other hackers breaking into computer systems, as well as folks that, that break into some of the most te technologically advanced uh, computer systems out there. I also run a hacker conference. Believe it or not, there's conferences dedicated to hackers. Um, and we all converge, and this one's in Louisville, Kentucky, but there's a big one in Vegas called DEF CON with 20,000 hackers where we share our exploits and our attacks and how we're getting into computer systems and try to get things to, to, be, uh, to be, uh, better the, the, uh, the world. And so if you look at, at what we deal with today, um, I started you know, essentially a company out of my basement and I grew uh, to well over 200 people uh, doing work globally uh, in, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the world. And uh, what's interesting to see what's happening out there is that the world is changing so fast. We use technology to start up our businesses, to augment. We go to the cloud uh, to, to be able to support our business objectives. We use information uh, from the internet. I mean, it's integrated into everything. I mean, we have you know, implantable devices in us now. We have smartphones. We have technology in our watches. I mean, we have you know, augmented reality. All of these things that are coming up. And if you're not uh, keeping up with things, machine learning and artificial intelligence is a whole new industry that's, that's booming out there around being able to calculate things faster, uh, autonomous cars, technology integrated into our cars ourselves. In fact, we do work for some of the largest uh, car manufacturers out there, and our whole purpose is taking cars apart to figure out how we can get them to drive off the road. Um, and, and obviously fix those, uh, we wanna fix those. Uh, but you know, if you look at how technology supports everything that we do, it's, it's everywhere. And so with that in our businesses and what we're dealing with on a regular day-to-day -day basis, it's important for us to protect. And so uh, let's take a little bit of a look around what's actually occurring out there. If you look at, at the, the hacker uh, demographics, there's a number of different hackers out there. You have organized crime, uh, you, mostly Eastern European, Russian descent uh, from that side. I'm sure everybody's heard of the terms ransomware. Uh, I'm sure of la as of last week or the week before, uh, the whole WannaCry thing where hospitals are being shut down, uh, that was an interesting uh, piece of it. Uh, you have that from an organized crime perspective, but you also have countries that are developing uh, sophisticated techniques around breaking into our own countries, get, grabbing our own intellectual property. We create trillions and trillions of dollars of intellectual property here inside the United States. And if countries can get that and get an edge on us when it comes to what we're building and how we're actually progressing in the market, they can go and do the same thing. We were dealing with uh, an, what we call an incident response recently, uh, where a nation state was hacking into a company in the manufacturing side and uh, basically stealing all their intellectual property for their next generation products so they can compete in our own market for a cheaper cost. 
Those are the things that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis um, as we go along in, in what we see. If you look at the news lately, has everybody heard of the term the equation group uh, and the shadow brokers? Um, those are two terms, uh, if you're not familiar, the equation group is the NSA, uh, and shadow brokers are the Russian intelligence side. And what happened uh, most recently is that uh, the NSA lost a substantial amount of their, what we call their exploit kits. Um, it, allowed, it allows uh, the NSA to conduct cyber operations across the globe. And as part of that, they had basically a skeleton key for every single Windows machine out there. So they can essentially access any Windows machine they wanted to. Um, and the shadow brokers, Russia, um, got a hold of these and leaked them to the public. And so now you had all these exploits uh, out there in the wild, and so it caused mass pandemonium. When you heard WannaCry happen, that was actually from the NSA's leaked toolkits. So the, the mass worm that was replicating and shutting down hospitals actually originated from us, and, and taxpayers actually paid for that code to, to be developed. Now, that's the world we live in today. We have to have those capabilities because we are conducting operations against other countries that have those exact same capabilities as well. It'd be a great world if we're all like, okay, let's share the information and protect ourselves, but no one else is doing the same thing. So we have to have those same types of capabilities. But it essentially means that you know, nation states have the ability to get into any computer system they want to at any given time, uh, which, is al which is always uh, pretty interesting. But if you look at how we're hacking today, if you look at how Russia hacks, how China hacks, how Iran hacks, how North Korea hacks, and by the way, the WannaCry, does anybody know where it came from? Where did WannaCry originate from, anybody know? North Korea. Kim Jong-un has a whole team dedicated to just making money for the regime. And WannaCry was ransomware. You paid to get your files back, right? And so he made about $200,000 off of that specific one. At least that's the general estimates in Bitcoin uh, at this point in time. Not a big, big bank, but uh, could have been much worse. And if you look at how these, these countries are actually getting into organizations and how they're exploiting machines and getting access and what you see in the news, guess where it originates from? Us. People are the number one target when it comes to how we get access into computer systems. By opening up an email, by opening up a document, by going to a specific website, you have the ability to introduce an attacker into your, into your network. And think about it. You probably, even in, in, uh, in, in a small business organization, you probably have firewalls, right? You probably have systems that try to protect you. You probably have antivirus. Do we know the effectiveness of antivirus today? It can only detect about 3 to maybe 5% of what the actual viruses are out there today. So you have these capabilities, right? And you hope that you have these protections in place. But let me just paint a little picture. Let's consider your business a, a castle. You have a firewall that protects your castle, right? You have, uh, a, you know, you have heavily stone walls and archers and moats and all these other things and intrusion prevention systems. And in this firewall, everything's protected. What happens when you get down past the drawbridge? You have a wide open area where you share information, you collaborate, your email servers, your instant messages, how you're, you're developing your, your, uh, your business. Everything that, that you hold you know, sensitive to your company is contained behind those walls. And if I hack you, where are you sitting at? Behind those walls. So there's no walls that are preventing us as hackers right now. That's why companies are really struggling with what we're identifying today is because hackers can break in to one individual and it's literally the downfall of an entire company. So that's the current state of security today. One person is the downfall of an entire company. It could be anybody in the company. It doesn't need to be somebody that is in your IT infrastructure. When I hack individuals, I go after sales folks. You can get them to do anything you want to. You're like, hey, I got a million dollars you need to spend by Friday. Can you open up this virus.exe? And they're like, sure, no problem. And you hack them, right? It's actually a true story, to be perfectly honest with you. It's the scary part about it, right? <laughs> But we are getting more sophisticated. And, and when I say the term hacker, hacker can be used for good and bad terms. But when I say the word hacker, we are getting better at what we're doing. We will send targeted attacks. We will you know, build information off of individuals and people, what you put on social media, what you do um, on, on, on your network. I was on the Katie Kirk, uh, Kirk show a couple years ago, and I actually hacked somebody live in the audience and uh, had hacked her home computer, enabled her webcam, was spying on her whole house uh, based on her, her Internet of Things devices. Uh, yeah, it terrified everybody, too, including my parents. Uh, <laughs> And then my mom was like, have you ever done that to me? I'm like, mom, I hacked your computer when I was like 13. You're fine. So, um, <laughs> but you know, what's, what's interesting and scary about the same part is that you know, a lot of folks don't understand uh, the awareness around how important it is not to open up things that you don't trust. As business owners, we try to open up everything because we want to move our businesses forward. But if you don't know where they're coming from, why even open up in the first place? By opening up a document, a Word document, by opening up an Excel document, by going to a website you don't know, those three things can completely hack your computer without you even knowing about it completely. Enable your webcam. If you notice my computer has this nice little camera cover on it. People think that's stupid, but it actually does work. 
Believe me, I'm, I spy on people with their, their cameras. It does work. Just kidding. Kind of. <laughs> so if you look at, at why we can't catch them in this industry right now, it's because the people piece of it puts a whole different wrench in what we do. Uh, people are unpredictable. Uh, we just have to change our tactics and our techniques of going after an individual in order for us to be successful. And our patterns shift all the time. We're changing how we do things. It, it, you know, in the 90s, why antivirus was effective is because we were still using AOL, um, and there was only like, you know, like 100 hackers out there sending viruses out. Now we have millions and millions and millions of hackers all over the place writing different things, and there's no way for antivirus technology to actually keep up with what we're doing. So the emphasis right now in businesses and to protect your businesses from these things is education is, is key and, and, and paramount. Understanding what your threats are as a business. You know, it's no different than any other business risk that you deal with on a regular basis. This is just one thing you have to build in if you're doing technology and business. You have to do security as part of it. And you have to build your organization to, to be able to withstand those. And I'll talk a little bit about that. But what we do as hackers isn't magic. It's not magic, okay? It might seem like it. I'm actually gonna show you a little bit of magic here in just a second, right? Um, I like doing magic shows. I, when I was a kid, David Copperfield, he was flying around, and I, ever since then I became a hacker. I don't know why that happened. But, um, but what we do as hackers is not magic. We're very predictable in our patterns of how we go and do things. But you know, the information that we leave online makes things so much easier for us. I'm sure no one here has a LinkedIn profile at all, right? And I'm sure you don't list any of your experiences, your prior businesses, or anybody that you're friends with, or anything like that. And I'm sure we're not on Facebook or Twitter or social media. Things that we do on a regular basis, right? We become much more of an open culture. That's great for us as attackers, because I just sit there and I research somebody, and I build an attack off of their information that's already out there and available. Um, that's fun for us. So let's do a demonstration. I need somebody in the audience. Now, it, it, okay, come on up. Can we, <laughs> come on up. Can we, uh, can we mic her? Okay. Um, here, uh, steps right there. Here you go. All right, Carmen. Pleasure to meet you. Nice meeting you. Give me a moment. You made your way on the stage. <laughs> now what I'm going to do, um, and I'm, and I'm going to show Carmen uh, this on the backside so you don't actually uh, uh, see any, any sensitive information. What I'm going to attempt to do is, I've never, Carmen, have I ever met you before? No. You raised your hand really fast though, that was impressive, so that was really good. <laughs> I've never met Carmen before. Um, are you from the United States? I am a resident here. You're yeah. a resident? Okay. I'm well, originally from Eastern Europe. So. That might be a little bit more difficult for me to find in a quick notice. We'll find out, though. Um, but what we're going to try to do is pull some information uh, about Carmen um, on the public network uh, and see what we can find. Now, most of the time, I can pull social security numbers or public information, pre previous addresses, family members, uh, things like that. So we'll, we'll give it a shot. So do I have your permission to, to look? Go ahead. All right. Are you here in, the, uh, are you here in uh, New York? Yes. you live in New York? Yes. Okay. Do you actually live in New York City? Um, no. Okay. So for time's sake, one second here. No, it might, it's com could completely fail, you never know. We shall see. Let me validate my pen number here. Got to get access to my super secure system, which I have trouble getting into. I'm sure we all feel that way. And so, Carmen. And just uh, for sake of time, what, uh, what, uh, what's your zip code that you live in? Just 10941. Middletown, got it. All right, let's take a look. Are you 28? Yes. OK. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that was too personal. I apologize. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else we got there. Uh, Sheena. Is that your sister? Sister-in-law. Sister-in-law, okay. Arnold, father? In-law. In-law, okay. David? Brother-in-law. Brother-in-law, okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. And David is not even on Facebook. <laughs> uh, cities. Uh, Bullville? Are you from there? Bullville, New uh, York? Or that's where my P.O. box is. OK. <laughs> Eric uh, and Lori? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is 
Is that your uh, social security number? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carmen. Appreciate it. Thank you. Give a round of applause, everybody. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. That also wasn't the last four, by the way. That was the full Social Security number. I'm not gonna, gonna half it a little bit there. I'm gonna go all the way. But uh, Carmen, thank you very much. Oh yeah, it's fine. Uh, they'll take it off. Uh, you can actually, they'll, yeah, here. I'll grab it, thank you. Thank you very much, Carmen. Oh, sorry, your hair's cut there. Uh-oh. All right, there you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> Again, let's give a round of applause for Carmen for coming up here. And by the way, that information has been scrubbed. It's not gonna be uh, used in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and I can get that in anybody here in the audience, so it's not a big deal, but. Uh, <laughs> and your companies for that matter, so you know. So breaking into stuff is easy, right? Because there's so much information out there for us, um, it's, it's possible for us to essentially do anything. Physical security by far is the easiest for us. We just impersonate anybody we want to. What's best is if you dress in a suit, put on your phone, you act like you're busy. Walk into any building you want to, including some of the most secure places. Uh, I've actually, I won't even talk about that one actually. Uh, so we'll <laughs> some fun tricks. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's one, one second here. Hopefully it plays, come on. Here we go. I gotta find where the mouse is at. I'm, I can hack into computer systems, but apparently I can't uh, play a video. <laughs> All right, hang on a second, I'll fix this. All right, so just look up here really quick. I'll hit play. So in these cases, um, doors have sensors. And in sensors, uh, when, you, when you open up a door building that's locked, you can actually use e-cigarettes to trigger the motion sensors on the other side to open up the doors for you. I don't smoke, by the way, but I always carry an e-cigarette with me, uh, just to make sure. It's actually in my bag right now. I broke into like three places when I was coming here. But... <laughs> so you open up a door that way, right? <laughs> So you ever need to get into a bank? I was actually a funny story. Uh, I was breaking into a bank. And uh, um, I've been wanting to do this e-cigarette trick for, for such a long time. I've been like, like, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. I've tested it out. This is where I tested it out on. Uh, this is at a hotel. Um, and so I'm like, all right, I'm gonna test it out. So I go to this bank and it's like two o'clock in the morning. I'm like in all black, you know, I got throat mics. We're communicating with my other guy. You know, we're breaking into this bank building and our whole goal is to get to this vault and get to the vault and then, you know, break into the vault and then take the money out, take pictures, and then put the money back, unfortunately. Um, but we got into this bank and we're at the front door and I'm sitting there for like five minutes blowing smoke into this, this, this door trying to trigger this motion sensor to work. We had already disabled the security system, actually did this time. Um, and one of my other folks, um, uh, Ben, which is right there, he, he's actually like 37, looks like he's like 14. Um, <laughs> but uh, Ben was, was, was going around the building to see if there's any other, other ways into there. So I'm out there for like 10 minutes now at this point, blowing smoke in this, I finally get it to work and I'm so excited. And I walk in and Ben's sitting there on the counter like <laughs> laughing at me. And I'm like, Ben, how'd you get in? Did you use the, the, the cigarette trick somewhere else? And he's like, no, man, the side door was open. They forgot to lock it. I'm like, all right. Uh, if you ever need to get into a bank with whiskey, this is my good buddy, Deviant. Got motion sensors on the top. Or you can just dress up in suits and, and pretend that it's someone's birthday. That's Biebs. Looks like Justin Bieber. And then this is us actually walking into the building. And walking past, while they're doing the balloons, we walk right into the building and then we plug into the network and we hack and steal all our data. So physicals can definitely be um, pretty easy. But there is some good news in all of this, okay? There is good news. The good news is there's a whole class of us out there, hackers. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. I'm using uh, uh, someone else's computer, and uh, when I hit the up arrow, it takes like 30 seconds to respond. So, uh, um, but uh, the good news is there's a whole class of hackers out there that are designed to try to figure out what's happening in the industry and try to protect folks. Everything from when you saw the WannaCry stuff happen. When, when WannaCry was happening, does everybody know how that got stopped and why it wasn't so catastrophic as we thought it was going to be? So one guy bought the website. Yep. A 22-year-old kid out of the UK was trying to help. 22 years old. Was trying to help, and he was taking a look at the malware and saw that when, when it was launching, it was going out to a website that, that wasn't registered. 
And it was an accident. He, he registered the domain name trying to figure out the website to see how many people were getting inf infected by WannaCry. And what the hackers had actually done is built in protection mechanisms against security defenses. And it said, if this website is up, shut yourself down because we think we're inside of what's called a sandbox, something that, that is looking for us to see if we're bad or not. And so it was a way of defeating um, the security techniques that we use today. But this 22-year-old registered this domain name. And so what happened is when the virus called out to say, hey, are you up and running? Is this website up and running? Am I inside of a sandbox? It's like, yep, the website's up and running. It actually stopped catastrophic loss across the world. And literally here in the United States, he found it just before we went into work here in the United States. So there's a whole group of us dedicated out there trying to protect folks against these types of things that are happening. And believe me, when, when WannaCry happened, it was on a Thursday night, of course. I didn't sleep all of Friday. I happened to go on a, another news organization at like, like 5 o'clock in the morning. I hadn't slept for two days, so I had like bags underneath my eyes. And you know, I had the, the suit on, but I was wearing gym shorts. Um, and I did the Charles Barkley. Uh, that's how it works. Um, but those types of things are things that we're trying to, to defend against. There's a whole group of us out there for it. Here's something that I did on With over 20,000 hackers in one Here's something I did on, on uh, Defcon's uh, the perfect venue for Discovery them to prepare Channel. for an upcoming bank hack in Beirut, Lebanon. So my good friends Jason. I mean, what's up? I thought what's you could up? break into anywhere. You couldn't oh, even get in our own oh, door. Screw you, man. <laughs> screw you. The beauty of this community is that I don't know all this in this one field, but I've got a friend who does. So what do you need? What do you want? Yeah, so we're doing a bank job, and uh, we're going all the way. Like, So we're going to do the full penetration testing, yeah. and everything, and full social engineering. Well, good news is I have uh, an unpublished version of the social engineering toolkit uh, where I just rewrote um, all the PowerShell injection techniques. I had a new one uh, I did recently with it. So security guards, um, you know, have their phones next to them. Right. So I spoofed a text message to the security guard, letting him know that there was an issue outside. He went outside, and then I broke into the building that way. So it works really well. That's so it's right so great. Down. Yeah. <laughs> that is sweet and scary. What's up, dude? Dude. Of all the hackers here, few know tech better than Darren Kitchen. We know you have some new stuff right. that's coming out. So He's ones. patented one of the most potent devices now in use and brought several that aren't even on the market yet. So if you need to do any uh, wireless on this engagement, this guy, pineapple. So it's on right now, my phone's connected to it. Check this out. So someone's already Turn off, meeting. turn off your Wi-Fi. Everybody turn off, everybody turn off, turn off now. everything Everybody's now. Don't do anything to you guys. But yeah, check this out. So we've got basically everyone in the vicinity. Oh my gosh. Right? So basically, man, this is a, a malicious access point. Think right. about it from this factor. You know, people go to Starbucks all the time. They go right. to hotels. Right. When they join those networks, your computer records those settings. So right. next time you power your computer on, it's like, hey, is Starbucks here? Hey, is this hotel here? And that intercepts that and says, yep, always, I'm yep, Starbucks, me. connect to me. So if I was a bad guy, I could actually uh, manipulate the, the websites they go to. Yeah. Now you're the man in the middle. So I could create a fake web page that looks like Facebook, or it'll look like uh, the homepage for Google or Gmail. It'll look like the homepage for several banks and make you put in your user ID and password there, and you think you're going to the legitimate site. Yeah, but they don't even realize it. So we're, yeah, we're definitely gonna use that. Yeah. So you guys gonna get physical access to any of these machines? We're planning, well, if, even if you only have a few seconds, I brought you some ducky payload. So what's nice about this one uh, specifically is uh, um, if you actually watch the whole show, um, we, we basically armed Jason uh, with enough stuff and Khalil, good buddies of mine, um, and they went to Lebanon, which is where Khalil's from, and they broke into a bank. And uh, it was, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a great show if you, if you didn't have a chance to see it, but uh, they've literally broken this bank. Uh, we're like, you know, uh, taking people from their computers, like the tellers, and saying, excuse me, I'm just here, I, I gotta uh, update your software. And this basically plugs in a USB device that hacks their computer um, from someone just off of the streets um, and got into their uh, financial systems and were able to take control of those uh, full things. Um, so obviously, um, there's a group of us trying to figure out how to best secure and, and exp explain vulnerabilities to companies and provide more uh, awareness because it usually is the humans uh, that become our weakest link for it. And so when you look at technology and what we're dealing with, businesses, if you're conducting any type of, of, of business online with technology, security has to be part of that plan. It has to be designed in a way that allows your business to be a, essentially compartmentalized in different areas so that if one of your areas of exposure get, gets compromised, it doesn't impact the rest of your business. And so if you look at building that, it's what we call in the security industry the defense in depth strategy, um, something that, that focuses on multiple layers of security to try to protect yourselves uh, from when these types of things happen. And it's not something that, that's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. These things are legitimately happening uh, all over the place. 
I came from uh, the intelligence community. I can tell you that uh, uh, when it comes to what we're facing as a nation, uh, we are in direct peer competitors with, with a number of different countries, uh, including Russia, including China, including North Korea. Uh, North Korea to a lesser extent, they're not as good as us. Um, Iran uh, as well. Uh, and we have a number of adversaries that are actively looking at stealing intellectual property. They're actively looking at getting into our water treatment facilities. And by the way, everybody always, always makes the argument, well, why haven't we seen a catastrophic loss in certain locations before? And it's because we all hack each other, and we all don't want to turn each other's systems off. So we, we hack Russia's water treatment facilities, their electric grid. They hack our water treatment facilities and our electric grid. And we all know we have access to each other. And we're like, well, we don't want to shut each other off because it impacts both of us. So it's kind of an arms race at this point on when the next thing happens around the types of capabilities that we're seeing out there. Um, and so hopefully, you know, it, it goes to a peaceful uh, type of thing. But we're all hacking each other uh, right now when it comes to it. Um, so that's the interesting part. And if you're doing business, must focus on, on security as a day-to-day -day thing. And you know, as an industry, uh, we're growing. Uh, you know, I mentioned that, that hacker conference in, in Black Hat uh, and DEF CON in Vegas. That's been going on. When I started in, in the industry uh, in 2003, I was working for the military, and there was maybe 100 of us at this, this convention in Vegas. You know, it was a small group of hackers, a bunch of computer nerds. Um, literally, we looked like we're in, in our mom's basements. Um, you know, uh, and 100 of us at this pool at a, a place called Alexis Park. And now it's taken over Caesars, where we can't even fit any more people into the place because it's grown so big as an industry. So we have 20,000 plus hackers converging on Vegas once a year to share how we're collectively trying to uh, face what we're dealing with uh, out there today. Um, and there's all, also conferences literally happening every single day. I was at a security conference yesterday. I was working with some of the largest businesses here in New York City, um, helping them defend um, themselves against what's happening out there. We have a, a practice called hunt teaming going on and looking for hackers in your environments. And so those are the things that we're doing as an industry to try to get better, and people um, in this industry are really focusing hard on it. But it requires help. We need more folks. Uh, you know, uh, it's a great field. It's a growing field. It's something that you know, I started my business uh, five years ago, and I have well over 200 employees uh, across the nation. Um, and I get to work with some of the largest companies you can possibly imagine because we're in so demand. Um, and that's one of the cool things about what we're dealing with is that it's not going to stop anytime soon, and technology is going to get better. We have to do something about it to protect our future. I want to thank you very much uh, for having me. Hopefully, I didn't scare you all too much. Um, I usually do that. Uh, my wife tells me that all the time, so I have to try to tone that back a little bit. Um, if you want the slides, you can always go to binarydefense.com slash iconic and download the slides. Um, but I want to thank everybody here, and I want to thank CNBC and everybody else for, uh, for having me here. It's wonderful. Yeah.